Hello, today we're going to be looking at designing a car for the purpose of 3D printing. The software we're going to use to design that car is Autodesk Inventor. First thing we need to do is create a new file. So I'm going to create new, or click on new here, and I'm going to pick a standard millimeter.ipt file. If this doesn't show up by default, you might have to click on the metric folder. So I'm going to click standard millimeter IPT, and it opens up in a new file. The file by default opens into three-dimensional space. Now we can't see anything yet because we haven't created anything yet. First thing we need to do to create a model is to just draw a sketch. So I'm going to create 2D sketch and I'm going to click on the work plane here to start that sketch. And you can see what happened here is my menus changed and I've got some coordinate guidelines on the screen. First thing I want to do is draw a line representing the bottom of my car. So I click on the line tool, I click to start that line, and you can see I've got a couple different boxes there, the different numbers. One is the degrees and one is the length. Um, by default the length is always highlighted. So what I'm going to do is make sure that my line is horizontal and I'm going to type in 60. By doing that it sets the length of my line to 60 millimeters. So there we go, 60 mils, and it keeps my line function active so I could keep drawing. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit the escape key to exit it. Now I'm going to draw the front of my car. To do that, I'm going to use the three-point arc tool, which is up here. I'm going to come over the front of that line, and I'm going to move it till my mouse snaps. And you'll see that a green circle will show up, and that'll mean that I've snapped to the end point of that line. If you leave a gap, so say if I drew the line here, it's going to leave a gap. You won't be able to extrude later on. So I click there to make my line start. And I come up and I'll make the front of my car. A little subtle curve there. There's my green dot again. And let's do the hood of the car. Sure. Okay. Find my green dot. And now I can draw a back bumper. We'll make a hatchback for this one. Okay, so there's the back of my car and there's the front of my car. Now I could just keep clicking that green dot and making the rest of the shape, but I want to show you something else. So I'm going to cross over my lines just to change this up a bit. I'm going to click down here. There's my front windscreen. Green dot, green dot. And there's the top of my car. So you can see a basic profile here. The only issue is these two overlapping lines. To get rid of those, I'm going to be using the trim command. So up here under modify, I've got a pair of scissors, it's trim. Click on that, and if you mouse over lines, you can see a black dashed line show up. Whatever is black dashed is what will be deleted if you click on it. If I click on this, it deletes that portion. If I click on this, it deletes the wrong portion. So I'm just going to do that back to trim and I'll delete that part there. So I've got the nice profile of my car. I can finish this sketch and that brings me back to 3D space. So I finish it, you can see everything move there. And now I want to extrude this out. So I click extrude and that brings me, takes that 2D profile and starts pushing it into three dimensions. I want to extrude this to 25 millimeters. Type 25 millimeters in the box and you can see that it comes out. Now I could play around here, not that it really matters, I could extrude that way, I could extrude symmetrical, whatever. For the case of this, it doesn't really matter how we extrude it, so I'll just leave it on the original there. And I click check. So that gives me the nice profile of the car. Now the car is a bit boxy, square edges, most cars don't have square edges. So we're going to use the fillet tool and just try to round off some of these corners. I click fill it up here. And I've got a series of tools here. I've also got the same tools here. Click on that. This is the older style. We're just going to put that away for now. We don't need to look at it. But I'm going to pick two edges. I pick two opposite edges because you want both sides of your car to be symmetrical. And now I can play with the size of these. So let's say five millimeters rounds it out a little more. It's nine mils uh, rounds it an awful lot. 
Let's try four, just something small and subtle. This is your design, not mine, so however you want to do it, go ahead. Click the check mark and that rounded off that corner. Now we can go and we can fill it out the rest of the car just to make it the way we like it. Let's say we want that top to be a little more subtle. There's a nice, nice fillet on there. We can do the size of that hood. Let's make them a little smaller. There's two. Come to the back of the car. You can notice that it doesn't select the edges once you fill it in a few. It'll just do a whole, a whole bar there. Uh, three. Let's see how that looks. Put this lower one there. Clean that up. We can fill it out this front curve. It might be a bit much. Let's take a look at two. That looks good. And we can fill it here. It's it's five look like yeah five's not bad let's go with that so we've got the whole body of the car rounded out the next step that we want to do is shell the car which is a process of making it hollow if you think about your toy cars you had as a kid most of them were hollow die cast metal uh, we're trying to get the same sort of effect here so we're going to make this hollow plastic if we take a look up at the top under modify you'll see that there's a command called shell click on shell and it gives you a preview of your car and you can see that there's some red lines on the inside which are hollowing it out one millimeter is a bit thin so if we set that to two it gives us a little more meat when it comes to the 3d printing don't click on any faces because if you do it will remove them in the process and then we click on oh it doesn't like two. if it doesn't like your number You've got to go to a smaller number. 1.5 works. Click the check mark, and now it's hollowed out my car. The next step is to create a sketch on the side, and we're going to draw where the wheel wells are going to be. I'm going to use the circle tool up here. I'm going to come down, and I'm going to mouse over this line. I want to mouse over the line because if I go too low, it's going to be difficult to print because you have some funny overhangs and the same if we go too high. So on the line and I want to make a 15 mil circle. Click 15 mil that sets your diameter. I'll do the same here at the front. 15 mil and that sets the diameter. So I've got my two wheel wells there. If I click on finish sketch I can extrude again. I'll click on that extrude tool. Click on those two wheels and you can see by default it wants to create this wheel sticking out which is way too much so I'm going to change my size to 5 so I'm 5 millimeters I'm also going to change it from join to cut so instead of making material and joining it to the body we're cutting a material away from the body so I click on cut I'm also going to change the direction so it's cutting into the car and now you can see that the preview shows it cutting in and what it's going to look like I click the check mark, and you can see I've sliced away a portion of the car. Now, I could redraw those on the other side and do it that way, but instead I'm going to show you how to use the mirror pattern. Now, before we can go ahead and use mirror, we need to have a plane that we can work from. So I'm going to click this plane tool up here. I'm going to click on the side of the car and drag in. Now, that's creating a new work plane. I can set this work plane distance from this face by changing the number here. Now, I know my car is 25 millimeters wide, therefore I'm going to set this at 12.5, so I know it's in the middle. Click on the check mark. Now see how it went out the wrong way? Because I forgot the negative. So I can right click, add dimension, and change that to a negative number. So now it's in the middle of the car. Next step, I'm going to click on mirror under pattern, click on mirror, you'll see this window shows up. I want to click my feature, which is those wheel wells, select mirror plane, and then I can click on that plane that I drew, click OK, and now we have the wheel wells on both sides of the car. I don't need this plane anymore, so I can come here, right click on it again, and turn off its visibility. So now I need a set of um, 
axle holes that are going to go through the middle here that will hold the wheels and axles later. So I'm going to create a new 2D sketch on this surface. Zoom in a bit. And you can see when I started the sketch here that it brought some geometry over from the original thing. I've got my center point of the wheel well and a couple lines. The center point's the big issue here. But if you look, I don't have it for the front one. So what I need to do is project the geometry from this wheel well into the sketch I'm currently working on. I click on Project Geometry. I click on that surface. I'll get full surface. And it brings it up exactly the same. So we can take Project Geometry and project any geometry into a work plane. I don't need it right now, but say I project that arc, it will bring those lines. Oop, didn't like that one. So it doesn't always work. Uh, let me try that one. There, brought that line into the, the drawing. Not that we need that right now. Okay, so I'm going to grab my circle tool, mouse over that point, and I'm going to make a 5 mil circle. So I just type 5, there's that. Come over this one, 5, and there we go. So now I've got my two circles. If I go finish sketch, still it's a 2D sketch, so I need to extrude this. Click extrude, and I can zoom in and I need to click on those two circles. Now you can see by default, it's kept the same distance as before, and it's extruding away from the car. So we need to change a few things. I can change the direction and set the distance. That's one way to do it. I also need to set this to join so it stays solid. But let's take a look at some of the other functions here. I'm gonna to go to selected face point. This allows me to select a face or a point that I want to extrude to. Rotate the car, select the other face, and you'll see that it just fills in that space there. Click the check mark, and now I've got the hub. Kind of cool. Now the next thing that we want to do is we need to put a hole through the middle of these. So I'm going to start a new sketch, click on that space again. Like last time, one wheel well's geometry showed up but the other didn't. So I'm going to use Project Geometry, project that geometry so I get that center point, and I'm going to create two new circles. Make it three millimeters, three millimeters, like so. Finish the sketch, and now I can extrude. There we go, click those again, and again, it comes out as um, a solid joined object, so I'm going to change that back to cut. And this time, instead of going to, to selected face, I'm just going to go through all, and that just tells it to cut through anything. So it goes all the way through. If I make this bigger, it's still going to go all the way through. So there we go. So there's my through all hole. Now, because 3D printing requires a fair bit of support, what I'm going to do is add another fillet. And we're going to fill it with these inside edges here. You can change the number if you want. Let's see what seven looks like. That fills it in a little more. This is just providing support, makes printing easier, and it's going to give you a cleaner hole when it, when it finishes up. Less sag. So there's my axle holes. And that's going to be the end of part one.